We're interviewing uh, Elder Lowell Cooper, who is serving as the chair of the nominating committee for this 61st General Conference session. Elder Cooper has served the church for a number of years, uh, retiring a few years ago as a general vice president of the General Conference and now serving in this capacity as chair of the nominating committee. Uh, Pastor Cooper, talk to us about uh, the dynamics of, of, of what it takes to put together a nominating committee for a general conference session. Well, it's a very interesting experience to be part of a nominating committee. Uh, division caucuses meet and select representatives to the nominating committee from their territory. There's a large group called General Conference employees, uh, General Conference uh, retirees, etc., that also chooses a number of representatives to the nominating committee. We have a nominating committee of 268 members. 20 of them, interestingly, join the nominating committee virtually. We have a screen that shows their pictures. We require them to keep a camera on all during the meeting. And uh, if they wish to participate in discussion, we can hear them. They can hear everything we say. And so these are our uh, representatives from other parts of the world that were not able to physically attend the session Some here. Some of them are even in North America, but have not attended because there's an option of virtual attendance at the session. Another interesting dynamic for this kind of a group is the multiplicity of languages. Uh, we, have, uh, we have French, uh, French translation, Spanish translation, Portuguese, and English. And when you layer all of those kinds of things, the linguistic differences, the cultural differences, you can perhaps begin to imagine what rules of order do to a meeting like that where rules of order that are written in English don't necessarily mean the same thing in another part of the world. So we've had a very interesting uh, time in learning how we're going to go through this process and explaining each time what is the meaning of a motion and what is its effect on the process of our discussions. So in a normal general conference session when you're dealing with a 10-day session, uh, the nominating committee is a committee that lasts almost the duration of that session. But now, with this session being compacted, uh, you're having to kind of really work extra time. That is true. There's a long list of uh, positions to fill. I think that we're going to be able to do it well within the time of this session. Uh, we've had a very productive day today. We probably have a report of some uh, 40 or 50 names to bring at this time. Uh, tomorrow we will deal with uh, division leadership. That would be another 39 names uh, which we expect to accomplish tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we're, we're making good progress, but there's a long list to begin with. So uh, talk about that list. I mean, how many names total uh, is, the, is the committee responsible for filling? Oh my, I don't, I haven't counted up all of the blanks on the pages. We have uh, uh, an agenda sheet probably of uh, nine or 10 pages. Uh, we we, we uh, make nominations, of course, for all of the general conference officers, the executive officers, the associate officers, the department directors, uh, the department associate directors, the um, associate secretaries, the associate treasurers, the vice presidents. Uh, we deal with the general conference auditing service board and the general conference auditing service staff plus the departments, the department directors, department associates, and let's see, there's a couple more, the General Conference Corporation Board. I think that kind of rounds up the list. Okay, it, so... It's well over a hundred positions. And so you said that you also are involved in division leadership, selecting well, division for the various divisions? Yes, we select, I'm, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that, we select uh, through the nominating committee process, we make nominations to the floor for the president, the secretary, and the treasurer of each of the 13 divisions. Now, are those divisions, do they, do they caucus and give influence uh, as to who they want, or is that solely up to the nominating committee itself? No, that's not up to the nominating committee. The caucuses, in fact, are meeting right now as we speak this evening. And the caucus group is chaired by somebody from the general conference. 
obviously the current officers of the divisions are not in those caucuses, it's just the delegates from the division. And the result of the caucus meeting tonight is to bring a recommendation to the nominating committee for the position of the president. We will receive those recommendations tomorrow morning. And after the nominating committee has acted on those recommendations, a report will come to the floor. Uh, and when the division presidents are elected, there is another occasion in which the division caucuses meet with the division president as an invitee for counsel, for conversation, but not as a voting member. And at that second meeting of the caucuses, the division secretary and the division treasurer will be recommended to the nominating committee and after passage in the nominating committee will be brought to the floor for election. Because of the incredible number of hours that this nominating committee process takes place uh, to, to accomplish, uh, these 200 and some members of the committee then are not involved in the general business that's happening on the floor. Is that correct? No, they are not. Uh, we begin each morning after worship uh, we are served meals in the same room where we meet, uh, the lunch and, and the supper. Uh, last night we uh, probably went till about 9 o'clock. Uh, we started this morning just after the worship period. We are not meeting tonight because the caucuses are meeting tonight. So these people have been in meetings a long time. I think that, uh, you know, uh, it's important for people to understand this huge, pro huge process that goes in. It's not something that's just cut and dried. It, it, there's a lot of thought, a lot of prayer, I'm sure, a lot of energy that goes into making sure that this is done decently and in order. We try to ensure in, in our whole uh, church decision-making process, we try to ensure that there is a group process for making decisions. In fact, that's one of the principles of the Seventh-day Adventist Church polity, that authority resides in groups more than in a single individual. And that's why it, it, it can be cumbersome to get processes cared for at a general conference session, because we depend on group process to arrive at decisions. Elder Cooper, you have been involved in church leadership for a number of years. Uh, what would you say are some of the greatest needs and some of the greatest challenges right now that, that face uh, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, um, you know, moving forward? Well, my, we have a number of challenges. I, I think uh, internally we have challenges in uh, passing, on the, passing on the torch to younger people. I think, I think that is a challenge in many parts of the world, certainly in the part that I'm from. Uh, we have uh, some internal theological uh, understanding issues that uh, are, are seen differently in various parts of the world. The question that has been uh, on the agenda of people's minds has been on the general conference agenda for several sessions, but not this session relates to the ministerial ordination of women. And uh, our, our world church doesn't see that question in the same way. So there are a lot of dynamics that go into making sure that uh, the church is going to function uh, together and in order. And the nominating committee is just one of those pieces of the puzzle. Is that just, what I... Just one of those pieces, yes. The nominating committee gets a lot of spotlight focus because it deals with the executive leadership at the general conference and the executive leadership at divisions. But it's only one part of a, a much more complex process of decision-making groups. The church manual committee, there's a church manual agendas that are dealt with at a session. The Constitution and bylaws committee. Uh, these things go through a lot of work before they end up at the floor for a decision by the delegates. And even there, even there, they can be very, very debatable. Thank you very much, uh, Elder Cooper. For the Adventist Review, I'm Phil White. Check out more of our content on AdventistReview.org.